So how to cook bison, kind of a how-to cooking bison versus beef and how to grill it on the barbecue or the smoker. Are you bison curious? Let's take a look at some serious, serious red meat and we'll see how to, just the differences between beef and bison. This is my review of the other red meat. Hey there, it's Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. And oh, my big announcement. I definitely have a huge announcement. Take a look at this. My fifth cookbook is going to be coming out November 17th. And I encourage, please pre-order it now. I'll put a link in the description and save the receipt number if you get one from Amazon. Uh, I'll have some pre-order specials. So go ahead and pre-order now. I'll have some pre-order like deals uh, if you uh, get it early before the on-sale date. Uh, we're talking about bison here today. The USDA defines red meat as all meats obtained from mammals, and we're thinking big mammals here. Bison. Red meat plays a starring role in American barbecue, and we do about, in America, about 25 billion pounds of beef a year. And believe it or not, actually, Uruguay and Argentina have more, which is, I guess, why the Brazilian steakhouses are so popular. But the most popular red meat in barbecue recipes, it's always beef. But I thought I've been seeing like bison pop up. Uh, you'll see here I've got bison brisket, bison ground meat, and bison short ribs. And bison's actually been seeing a surge in popularity in North America. And I think it's because basically it is better for you. It's a lot leaner than beef. So the one trick is going to be you got to keep it moist, and we'll get into some of the details specifically about the brisket, the ground, and the ribs of this. You know, problem with one reason people like bison is because it's actually considered healthier, and I think any grass-fed beef, grass-fed meats, they're prized for those health benefits, um, and it's also humane benefits because they're usually pasture-raised, fed with grass. But the actual grass-fed beef and bison has those healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Also, it is higher in antioxidants, vitamins, and a beneficial fat called conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA. It's known for its improved immunity and anti-inflammatory benefits. So a little bit about the Honest Bison Company. They sent me these samples. They call it Honest Food You Can Trust Naturally. And they started out just with 100% grass-fed bison, but they've branched off into different things with like elk and other things. They're real transparent about what they do. They say they believe everyone deserves to know exactly where their food comes from, how it's raised, how it's processed, what's in it, and who is handling in it. So, it. so check out the, the link below and you can find out more about it. I want to talk about how I cooked my bison, how it differs from beef, specifically I quick grilled my bison as burger patties first. The other one I did was bison short ribs, and uh, they tasted great. I slow smoked those on the pellet grill. And then I also did a slow smoked bison brisket with some real simple seasoning on my wood pellet grill and did that low and slow. All three of the cuts cooked up a little bit differently, so let me look at them separately and you can choose from the steaks, the roasts. They got all every different cut of bison you could figure out. But uh, as for ground, I think the most common thing people are going to cook up is going to be ground bison burgers. And I even saw some ground bison at Costco. And you can get it different places now. Um, I just did it as burgers. And I really wanted to compare here how different it tastes and how different it cooks. And I would say... Bison, it looks a little different. It maybe appears darker than the beef. The burger patties I made were like a really rich red color. And they say that's thanks to the mineral rich nature of game meat in general. I cooked bison patties alongside these typical beef patties. They were both, I believe, 80-20 grain fed. The uncooked beef you might see was a bit more gray in the video here. But when they cooked, they honestly, they looked the same and... It's really cooked the exact same as ground beef. The flavor maybe was a bit more robust and rich. I actually saw on the website that the Honest Bison offers pre-pressed pre burger patties as well as 90-10 ground bison. I would say the 90-10, if you order that, it's going to be a little too lean 
for what you'd want in a burger, maybe for a chili or something. The standard ground bison that I grilled um, was perfect. I just added some Montreal steak seasoning and grilled it the exact same way as beef. If you're a fan of rare internal temperature on your burger, cook the bison just as you would a regular beef patty. Bison does cook slightly differently with steaks and roasts, though. So we'll um, talk about that with the brisket and the beef, uh, the, the short ribs, in just a second. First, how bison tastes versus the beef. The flavor of the bison was good for burgers. I actually loved it. Um, just slightly different maybe than beef. It's just slightly. There was maybe a slight grass-fed flavor, mostly more with the brisket and the ribs I'll get into. But with the ground bison, I could barely discern a difference. There may have been a slightly flex here and there of a wild flavor in just uh, in, in a couple different bits of the grind, maybe. But it was just enough for me to know it was something different. So I, I actually really... Uh, like that way of cooking it probably my favorite way just like a burger just like beef but when you're talking about beef or bison short ribs um they're something that you'll probably really enjoy cooking if if you're looking for something a little bit different and something more exotic it's not really all that exotic but really good for the smoker and the grill um these are like english style Beef ribs, where the bones are cut into three to four inch segments, is typically how they come. Um, with you look at the big bison, you think I kind of envisioned giant Fred Flintstone sized bones, but really the uh, you know because the, the 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 bison are barrel chested, they're just huge and very stocky in the front half of the the beast. But in reality, bison ribs looked and actually cooked a lot like beef back ribs. Color was a little bit more red and rich and darker than the beef before cooking. Um, again, game mammals are true red meat. That protein, the myoglobin, holds the oxygen in the muscle. It gives the, the meat a little darker, redder color. And I also noticed that these bison ribs have less fat than the beef short ribs. They were really similar in size and shape. Like I said, I cooked them on the wood pellet smoker. Uh, I'd say they're best smoked and best cooked slow smoked or even braised probably the the website says a lot of people like braising them until the meat falls off the bone but i smoked them for three hours then i wrapped them in foil tightly with a bit of apple juice to keep them moist and then i continued to cook them at about 225 degrees wrapped in foil for two or three more hours finished them unwrapped and sauced them up for the last hour over direct heat so um, I will say I did spray them and spritz them down and I marinated them for a few hours before cooking. I think that I'll get into that too. Uh, a little marinade of vinegar helps remove a little bit of gaminess that you may get. Um, and spraying them keeps them moist too. Just be aware of opening up your smoker too often when you're spraying them in colder weather. It can lower the temperature of the cooker and you, you get extended cook times that you just got to kind of keep track of. I enjoyed the taste of the bison ribs. They're really similar to um, beef ribs. You got to, because they are more lean, you really got to marinate them or inject them with a marinade and then wrap them with foil to keep them from drying out in the cooking process in the middle. Um, and then you'd sauce it as you would with a beef rib. So again, very similar. There's some prep things I would do with beef ribs that I did and I would do more of next time. When I cook beef, I try not to over trim the, the fat, but with cooking bison, you're going to want to use a sharp knife and really get off all of the excess silver skin and membrane on the top and back of the bone. I mistakenly actually didn't remove some of the top layer. I really should have. And the white membrane looked like it was a layer of fat on the meaty side of the rib bone. I actually left it alone. I shouldn't have. I discovered that's where a lot of gamey flavor comes from. So after cooking it, I was still able to remove that top thing. And I noticed, you know, it eliminated a lot of the strong, I'd say, gamey flavor of uh, that bison has. It's all in the silver skin. Nevertheless... I always do pull the membrane from the backside of ribs anyway. So beef and bison is actually tougher to pull off that, that membrane, but definitely worth it. Uh, also to minimize gamey flavor, 
you can you do it with elk and boar as well. Um, make sure you eliminate any excess blood that you see. Um, marinate it uh, like an overnight soak in buttermilk sometimes people like to do or with salt and vinegar or a sugar. Just a good solid marinade usually does the trick. Lastly, okay, bison brisket. Um, you know, I would marinate it too next time. I did not marinate it. I just used it. I cooked it just like I would um, a regular beef brisket. My thinking was this is going to be a massive brisket. And actually, they don't really sell the whole packer bison briskets like you may be used to getting in the store. Uh, it's about a 5 to 10 pound smaller flat of bison. So it's going to be extra extra lean. So you're going to really, really want to smoke it for a couple hours, then wrap it up. I'd even recommend, this is a meat you could use a slow cooker for and give it hours. But grass-fed bison brisket is, again, just like grass-fed beef brisket, not grain-fed. But they're both, I think they're better suited for other cooking methods. I wouldn't recommend um, slow smoking it. It's not going to have that thick fat layer that a lot of pit masters really love about grain-fed beef brisket. So if you're looking for a fatty brisket experience, you're going to probably want to try a different cut. The tricks are trim off all the visible silver skin and any rib membrane you're going to do. You, I would highly suggest you marinate anything and use some cider vinegar in the marinade for uh, the ribs. It'll mellow the quote-unquote wildness. Uh, also, just try and boost the moisture. If you're cooking bison steaks and, and whole roasts and things like that, on the website, they say, the, in the comparison to cooking it versus beef, they say first, cook it for a third of the time and a third of the temperature of beef, which is mainly referring to like the steaks and things you would serve rare, not the ribs and briskets I did. So just make that distinction. What I would say it's approximately one third of the doneness temperature of beef in degrees beef is rare with a red center at 125 degrees fahrenheit beef is medium at 145 so for the steaks and cuts of bison or bison tenderloin that they sell rare would be 115 to 120 degrees internal and medium rare 121 to say 125 degrees fahrenheit and medium cooked bison probably should have internal temperature of about 126 to 130 degrees. I put, I'll put i put all this on the website, barbecuetricks.com. Check out the Honest Bison article. Lastly, remember to rest the bison steaks and roasts so you don't overcook them, and temperature's going to raise a little bit in that resting process. Again, I really like the ground bison, and it's worth a try. Just cook it almost the same as ground beef. And check out my new book. It's the Big Book of Barbecue Tricks coming out November 17th. And uh, we will give you more details on that on the website as well. For more tips, tricks, other fun stuff, it's www.barbecuetricks.com.